Welcome everyone. And thanks for tuning in to the Love Skills pre-show where we are giving you a sneak peek behind the scenes of our upcoming erotic weekend, October 14th and 15th. I'm Professor Playtime, the Executive Director of For Love and your host here on the Love Skills pre-show. On this show, we're gonna be speaking to each of the 16 experts, hosts, and facilitators of our upcoming Love Skills Weekend. Today, we have Dr. Allison Ash and Sebastian Clark on the show. Hi there, thanks for having us. My name is Dr. Allison Ash, or Dr. Ali, and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm Sebastian Clark, use he, him pronouns, and also go by Seb. Awesome, welcome to the show, y'all. Dr. Allison Ash, AKA Dr. Ali, is a trauma-informed intimacy coach and educator, Stanford University lecturer, author, and founder of TurnOn.Love. As a sociologist with a PhD from Stanford, she has a comprehensive understanding of the complex societal challenges that often lead to unsatisfying and disempowering intimate experiences. She also draws on her extensive training in Hakomi Mindful Somatic Psychotherapy, innate somatic intelligence trauma therapy approach and somatica method of sex and intimacy coaching to support her clients to radically explore and courageously express themselves. Dr. Ali designs workshops, courses, and retreats and offers individuals and couples coaching to give others the tools to be able to cultivate and sustain nourishing emotional and sexual intimacy. And Sebastian Clark, AKA Seb, is a certified turn on dot love sex and intimacy coach and educator. Seb has also training from the Sexual Health Alliance, an accredited coaching program that brings together the top tier sex positive and progressive experts in the field to train its coaches. He has more than a decade of experience working with autistic folks and specializes in supporting people on the spectrum and their partners to have fulfilling intimacy. In addition, Seb teaches workshops and courses and offers individuals and couples coaching to a wide range of clients, helping them to have the kinds of sexual interactions and romantic relationships they truly desire. Seb has also worked as a licensed trauma-informed massage therapist, supporting his clients with embodiment, nervous system regulation, and naming wants and needs. So thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show, you two. It is an honor to have you both here. So first and foremost, really the most important uh, aspect of this pre-show is to really give our listeners a chance to get to know each of you better. So I would love to hear from both of you on this question. Maybe we'll start with you, Dr. Ali. Can you share a bit about the journey that brought you into the work that you do today? Sure. I would say that if, you know, it always depends on where you want to start the journey, but really for me, it goes back to childhood where intimacy wasn't modeled much in my family dynamic in terms of really any any form platonic familial relational intimacy and so what that meant is that i was learning a lot through trial and error and as so many of us have done that oftentimes leads to traumatic and disempowering experiences and that really led me to want to focus on what being sexually empowered meant for me which really included radically exploring myself, getting a clear sense of who I am, what I want, what I need, what has me feel good, what doesn't have me feel good, and then becoming more empowered to express myself and to advocate on my own behalf. Mm -hmm. And so when I started my PhD program, it was really clear to me that I wanted to focus on sexuality and gender dynamics because of this trajectory that I had already been on in my personal life of moving from experiences that felt so yucky to figuring <laughs> out how to find and cultivate experiences that felt so yummy. And what I think that whenever you see the water that everybody else is swimming because you don't take for granted these skills, intimacy is a skill. Mm -hmm. Some of us have it modeled and templated for us at such an early age that it feels innate. And that wasn't my story. And so I really got good at seeing the water that everybody was swimming in and learning the building blocks of how to create all sorts of different kinds of emotional, physical, sexual intimacy with friends, with lovers and partners, with colleagues across the board. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in my PhD program, I was really dedicated to focusing on intimacy. And I did a lot of research on the college hookup culture and the orgasm gap and queer and trans experiences. And ultimately what I wanted to do was take 
everything that I was discovering through my research out of academia and apply it more practically through experiential coaching and courses because I really wanted to empower the masses to have fulfilling intimacy, to be able to learn the skills that we're all so desperate for, but so few of us are actually taught and be able to help people feel more empowered to have the kinds of relationships that they're wanting. Mm, beautiful. And how about you, Seb? Yeah, well, for me, I guess similarly starting kind of very early in the beginning as, as a kid, I was incredibly sensitive kind of empathic kid uh, and calm like a space to death because I was just often overwhelmed by the intensity of, of life and things going on. And um, I come from a, a British cultural family background. My parents moved from England where I was born. And there's like a, a not a huge culture of emotional kind of sensitivity and communication and uh, not to throw British folks under the bus, but it's not necessarily their strong point in uh, in relating culture, and it's not you know it's not my parents' fault. It's just something they weren't taught, and so for me being so sensitive and having kind of uh, a missing experience of emotional intelligence and capacity to template how to feel feelings in a healthy way and communicate and share intimacy in a healthy way um felt very confusing for me as a young person and like I could tell there was something missing it was hard to put my finger on uh and so then you know later as I as I became an adult and got into uh my first marriage that was a 10-year relationship uh, that started when I was 20 we had an incredibly hard time trying to find healthy intimacy and love even though we cared about each other so much and good God did we put in the work, we like basically took it on as a full-time job to try and figure out how to love each other well. And eventually by the time, you know, 10 years had passed and it was like, we had not been able to kind of undo some of the early patterning. Mm -hmm. It became clear that, that it just wasn't serving us to, to try and stay together. Um, so I saw very much firsthand kind of how hugely central intimacy and relationships are in our lives and how much they have the power to impact all the different aspects of our lives. Um, and it was just, you know, it was so devastating to kind of try so hard to save this, this relationship and have it not succeed. Um, and seeing other people in my life, in my life, like, also really struggling in these areas and trying to find each other. So after transitioning out of that marriage and spending quite a, a few a few years in my healing journey, uh, it just became very clear to me that, that I wanted to refocus my work and my attention on bringing this kind of, of learning and skills and uh, understanding of how to have healthy relationships uh, as I was discovering it in myself into the world uh, more broadly. Uh, being able to support people from a place of my own healing felt just like the clear direction and passion that I had for life. And so that's, that's what took me into the coaching educating field. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for for both of you for giving some some insight right into your personal story because i i think it will resonate with a lot of people like the big thing that i'm hearing in in both of your journey and was absolutely true in mine is that there was just a general lack of modeling um and that can cause so much pain and disconnection from ourselves and and in our relationships and into, I think it was you, Dr. Ali, who said intimacy is a skill. And I think you kind of hit it on an, the head with why we do love skills at all, <laughs> which is that there is a lot of pain from the fact that we aren't modeled these skills, but these skills are so necessary to thrival 
and deep connection. And so I'm excited to have both of you here coming with just the breadth of knowledge and experience you both have, but also representing that really beautiful sort of cyclical cycle that a lot of, of us in like the, the facilitator, educator, healer roles is that we started on our own journey. And through that, like learning and healing and that alchemization, we are now kind of putting that forward. And so we're super, super excited to have you and to have all of the experience that you're bringing to love skills. Um, so with the past experiences and also the years of experience that you've had both personally and professionally, so what do you think is the most common misconception that people have about either your journey or your work? I think most people out there assume that I or we have the hottest, easiest, most perfect sex lives. They really pedestal what they imagine our sex lives to be. And I think in reality, all couples in long-term relationships struggle with intimacy from time to time. And, you know, Seb and I are married and we have a relationship that is beautiful and we invest in with a lot of intention and care. And of course, we've navigated all sorts of challenges along the way, including feeling pressures around sex. And intimacy is something that requires that kind of intentional work and effort and maintaining it while also making space for normalizing the natural ebbs and flows and the dynamic nature of preferences and desires and pleasure and to humanize ourselves with each other. But I think it's also important to humanize ourselves with our clients and with workshop and, and course participants, because I think that there's a, such an easy way for us to assume that something is wrong with us and everybody else has it going on. And that feeds this myth of normality. It feeds shame cycles that I should have mastered it because everybody else seems to have mastered it. And I just think it's so important to to really take these intentional steps to normalize the fact that everybody challenges with intimacy in some way, shape or form at some point in their, in their relationships. And that, that, that is fluid and dynamic. Yes. I often say like one of the, the, the biggest hurdles that we face in sustainable relationships is the belief that there is some constant consistent ideal. Like it, it just isn't the human nature and it certainly isn't human nature when relating to another person. And I, I, in my, you know, personal belief, I think so much in terms of like liberating ourselves could stem from just this understanding, just the reality that an ebb and flow does not equal bad, does not equal falling apart, does not equal we've made a mistake. It actually is a, it should be assumed. Like if we could just prepare, that's actually the norm. The way we respond and react to it, I think would be much different and much more spacious in relationships. Well said, yes. I think that the more that we can just make space for the diversity of human experiences and the fact that, um, you know, the myth of normality is this idea that if people are only talking about what they think is normal, it perpetuates the belief that that's actually normal. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's obscuring so much of what we're all navigating that we're too ashamed to talk about. And so then people believe that they're alone and isolated in those experiences. And that's just really painful, unnecessarily painful. Mm. Yes. Snaps to all of this. So let's talk a little bit about um, what you two are bringing to the Love Skills Weekend. So you, for all the listeners, can catch uh, Dr. Allie and Seb's workshop, From Pressure to Pleasure, Reclaim Your Desire, Sunday, October 15th from 1.30 to 2.45, that's Pacific Standard Time. So what are some of the topics, exercises, things that people can expect to explore in attending your workshop? Yeah, I'll share a little bit about that. We are going to be talking about the impacts of feeling pressure around sex and intimacy, both individually, uh, somatically, on the relationship itself, and also various sources that pressure can arise from that can show up for folks both in new kind of dating relationships uh, and also in long-term dynamics. Pressure is a very common thing for across the whole spectrum of different levels of relationship. Um, through some experiential exercises, we'll give tools and practices that people can use to move through stuff like performance anxiety, 
and what to do when you or your lover have differences in desires or libidos. Um, and the truth is that there's just so many different ways that pressure can show up for us. And it's often very um, just hard to know what to do with it, right? We, we just want to try and keep it in a little box in the corner and try and get through some encounter. And that often exacerbates it, makes it much bigger and scarier than it needs to be. And so hopefully giving people some skills to take it out of that box. Awesome. And I, 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 what I really appreciated is I, I find that sometimes there's just a general lack of awareness, right? Like of our own one, how we respond to, um, the felt sense of like the energetic sense of pressure, um, but more so our own, right? Or like sometimes we are blind to our own motivations, our own desires. And so I love the fact that you're anchoring everything sort of back into that, which is like really paying attention to how the conscious pursuit of desire and like how that shows up for us and how we are relating to one another. Um, because without that awareness, it, I find that it's, you know, we're not actually cultivating the connection that we're seeking it we're creating further distance and so I'm really really glad that you two are bringing this conversation to love skills specifically um, but it's also important to know that you're both coming with a substantial breadth of experience and knowledge in all things intimacy so of all the workshops that you could have done why did you both feel this specific workshop was important to include in this love skills well, I think pressure on sex is such a common challenge that so many of us face, and it transforms, as you were saying, this opportunity for connection and pleasure into an experience that's daunting and stress-inducing and takes us away from our relationship with our own body as well as connection from our lover or partner. And the reality is, is that when folks feel a lot of pressure, oftentimes what they end up doing is either shutting down and turning off their desire to explore the openness to intimacy, or they try to override it and push through it. And then they mm -hmm. end up not honoring their nose. And over the long run, that will lead to resentment towards sex, towards yourself, towards your partner. And these kinds of dynamics can really disrupt the health of a relationship over the long run. And so, as Seb said, whether it's a new ro romance or a long-term relationship, if you can learn how to address and alleviate the pressure and use it as a way to create intimacy and emotional connection and bonding with your partner rather than a fear of rejection or, or shame, that is such a crucial step to being able to truly overcome pressure rather than just trying to fake it till you make it mm -hmm. or uh, lay down and just let go of it all complete all together because it just feels too daunting and overwhelming. <laughs> just shove this under the rug, <laughs> pick that can down the line mm -hmm. and we'll deal with it later. It <laughs> doesn't seem to work. So, um, so what is something that you both hope people who are attending your workshop will walk away with or something that you hope that they may feel or experience in attending your workshop? Yeah, great question. We, I would say we want participants uh, to give participants the knowledge and tools to reclaim their authentic desire and bridge the gap between pressure and pleasure and experiencing more nourishing intimate experiences. Uh, we mm -hmm. want to support folks feel empowered and able to meet the moments where pressure just kind of sneaks its way in. Uh, so they're themselves and their lovers can can connect and, and meet that moment with skill and also a lot of self-compassion and gentleness and kindness, right? I think when we get permission to have those kind of less comfortable feelings it can create so much healing and also opportunity for actual real intimacy to, to grow and thrive, even if it doesn't look the way that we maybe had thought it might in those moments. Mm -hmm. yeah. well and I think that when we feel, when we can receive permission from our lovers to be where and how we are and to feel whatever feelings that we're having and empathy that they really can understand how we feel, how we feel, that is by far and away one of the most trust building, safety creating, 
bonding ways to relate. And one of the things that we like to work with clients and participants around is, okay, so if something isn't available, what is available instead? That might be instead of sexual intimacy, more emotional intimacy, or it might mean instead of that kind of sexual interaction, this kind of sexual interaction. But how do we have the skills and the grace to be able to explore what is available and to be receptive to that and to uh, affirm and appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I'll just yes. Add, I'll, I'll just add one more thing that, you know, I think because uh, what we're going to offer is going to include some opportunities to practice these skills, you know, our hope is that people will walk away feeling like they are kind of already broken the ice with creating a culture in their relationship of having these sort of potentially new and uncomfortable conversations in the moment when they come up. Because if you just kind of hear it outside in a workshop and don't have any practice with it, and then you're in the moment in the bedroom and you're like, okay, this is the moment where I'm supposed to do that thing that I learned. It's so much harder than if you've already kind of templated and and broken the ice with, with a lover or a partner or even a stranger to be able to find the words in the moment. And we'll do lots of role playing and and different kinds of ways of practicing these skills. So even if folks are attending the workshop on their own, that's no problem at all because I think that you can still start to create that pattern of what to say, how to say, getting that that reassurance and, and support and encouragement in a workshop setting, which can feel safer it makes it more accessible to do it whenever you are with somebody that you're intimate with. I honestly might just take that sound bite and use that to like promote love skills because once again, you're nailing it. Like there's so much to be said about building like experiential learning, which is like building that neuroplasticity, building that like ability to hit, to kind of reach some of those places, but also practice, like actually practice something, not theorize, but like in, in real time, but without the heightened, you know, more charged environment when there's an, let's say an attachment figure, or it's a new lovership, like it is far more challenging to fall back on tools that you don't have right in the moment. So what love skills offers, right, is exactly what you said. Workshops where you can get in Mm. and practice these things in a safer environment with a little bit of a container with professionals that can help hold the line, but like actually practical skills that we can take back into our own personal lives. Yes, love it. So here for it. So for anybody who would like to get in touch with you um, following this pre-show here, what is the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, reach out to either of us through our website, which is turnon.love. And on our site, you can find out more about our upcoming workshops and courses and our on-demand offerings. We have more than 10 different on-demand workshops you can rent from home at any time. We have a month-long course for couples in, in October called Sustainable Intimacy, Reignite the Flame for the Long Game. And we're constantly coming out with new offerings. And then you can also find out about our experiential coaching practice and how we work with clients and the ways that we support them with experiential skill building, as well as some of the deeper emotional processing of the obstacles that can make it hard to actually implement these skills. And we offer complimentary consultations for folks so they can learn more about our methodology and how we can, how we can support them. That's amazing. That's a, that's a huge offer. So um, thank you both so much for being here, for sharing a bit about your journey and, you know, giving people more insight into who you two are as people um, and also just taking the time to be a part of Love Skills and helping us continue this mission of just making these resources accessible and creating the world we want to see from it. So thank you both. I want to just mirror that right back at you. I'm so grateful that you've created this offering and I feel honored to be included. I know that we both do. And it's so important to have these spaces where we can learn sex positive skills for healthy relating. And the reality is, is that when we have these spaces, what has felt out of reach or inaccessible or impossible becomes tangible and 
actionable and it really comes from people like you creating the spaces and having the initiative and the drive to do that so that we can all benefit as a result. Thank you so much. Yeah, and th- appreciate you. It's, I'm, I'm glad to collaborate. Yeah, definitely excited about this one. And thank you to everybody who has been here watching or listening to us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video on whichever platform you are catching us. It really does help us spread the word about Love Skills and all of the incredible hosts and facilitators that we're going to have. And remember that Love Skills tickets are on sale still right now. You can find more information about tickets at forlove.love forward slash events. And there you will also find this pre-show episode, more information and ways to connect with Ali and Seb, as well as all of our other hosts of Love Skills. Thank you all again for your continued support, and we will see you on the next installment of the Love Skills pre-show.